Welcome to another episode of the Bees and Honey podcast. Today we're speaking with Italian-American artist Paolo Pelosini, and he, I'm here in his studio uh, just before an exhibition that he's organizing with uh, art dealer um, Mr. Horla Guggenheim, Philippe Horla Guggenheim. Um, I have to give a warning before this episode because there are expletives uh, as part of the dialogue with the artist and uh, some people perhaps need a warning for their delicate ears but I'm of the school which believes that uh, highly intelligent people often use expletives to emphasize what they're saying. Anyway, uh, it's part of life so I hope you enjoy this episode. Thank you. What I love about Anchor is that it's given me creative control of my own material. I was approached by a big company to do a podcast about the art world and I didn't want to sign over all rights to them. Uh, Anchor has allowed me to make this podcast and to keep creative control as well as financial control in terms of advertising. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place for free. You can use it on your phone or your computer. There are tools that help you to upload your recordings uh, that you've done separately or on the app. They'll distribute it for you as well, which again, you know, I couldn't wrap my mind around distribution and they have it all there for you in one place, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and many more. Uh, you can easily make money from it as well. Uh, they help you advertise. As you can see right now, I'm getting my first ad out through Anchor. And all you have to do is download the app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Good luck with your podcast and getting your voice out there and owning your content. Um, I'm used to it. Good. Well, I often say things wrong too, but the good thing is I'm getting older like you, so I don't have many um, excuses for saying the wrong thing anymore. I don't make excuses anyways. Uh, so this is episode four, New York City Art World Stories. I'm in the studio of Paolo Pelosini, uh, who is an artist on the upper, upper east side of Manhattan. I met him many years ago through two people, his daughter uh, and also my friend who will mention another time, Alessandro, who's also Italian. Cheers. So Paolo has um, these dinners that he has many different uh, art friends over to. Uh, I met a couple of artists, I met uh, some other curators, and uh, different people show up here from time to time. So tell us about your dinners, first of all. Well, uh, I'm, I'm going to make, uh, I made some uh, uh, pasta with, uh, with broccoli, you, uh -huh. know, if you like that, Yeah. with a little tomato sauce and, you know, and broccoli. Okay. And then I made uh, a shrimp salad mm -hmm. with uh, the classic Italian shrimp salad with uh, celery. Oh, you know? nice. And then I made mussels. I don't know if everybody wow. eats mussels, but I made some, uh, some um, I found some really good uh, frozen, uh, you, you can't eat f fresh mussels. You never know where you, you know, sometimes they're there. Right. So I found some uh, fresh, uh, from frozen mussels from Chile down in the Antarctica there, like cold, <laughs> fresh one. So they're really good, they're really good. Wow, yeah, I forgot to mention that these dinners are generally uh, spectacular. Uh, he's an artist in the kitchen and out. So I'm gonna just refer to my notes to prompt my uh, memory of what I thought I would discuss with you because we could go on for hours just as normal. Um, could you tell me some stories of your history as an artist in New York, how you arrived here, how you started working as an artist, how things developed over time for you? Well, I, I uh, let me go back a little, a little later. You know, I started, you know, being an artist when I was a little kid. That's all I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a painter. That's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was, uh, you know, 10 years old, I was already painting and looking at uh, uh, Picasso and, you know, and a little encyclopedia, never mm -hmm. seeing any artwork. And, and here there was in color this, this, this painting of Picasso 
the guitar and the mumbling. I was 10 years old and it was the most fun saying, why anybody would do something so weird, so strange, <laughs> right? So, so it was it, it really, it, it was, uh, I guess that's what they call uh, a, a point of crystallization when you really, this is what I want to do. Right? And, and how old were you? I was 10. Right. But my first love was Van Gogh, a painter like Van Gogh. You know, he was, you know, he was, uh, uh, I, 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 used to have like a little canvas and a piece of paper, whatever, and go up on the olive groves and paint olives and, and I paint them blue or, you know, that kind of thing. Wow. And then, and then of course, I went to our school and uh, to the Academy of Art in Florence and um, uh, came to, to America. I came to America and uh, when I got here, I went to Oberlin College for, mm -hmm. for a semester. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I was the only the only student that couldn't speak in English and got A's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what year was that? What uh, when did you arrive here? Sixty seven. Mm -hmm. It was the first time, and uh, uh, it was I think yeah, it was the winter of sixty eight when I went to Oberlin College. That's when when Martin Luther King got killed and um, uh, um, Bobby Kennedy. So it was, you know, it was, uh, was the beginning of, uh, of the 60s, right, or yeah. whatever. And, um, but then I came to America and I saw this big painting of Frank Stell and stuff and it blew my mind and immediately became, you know, it was a figurative uh, painter, became a, a minimalist, you know, instantly. <laughs> <laughs> a radical shift. And then, and then, and then of, you know, uh, conceptual art. I, concept, I went to the University of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. and, and then I was teaching at the Cleveland Institute for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I became a conceptual artist. Mm -hmm. uh, things for 1970, that conceptual art. And, uh, and I kept doing it for a while. And then eventually I felt, uh, I felt that... Uh, I needed to do something that came from within. I had somehow, I was not uh, getting my demons out somehow. I, I needed that. And I started doing sculpture with an axe, cutting, you know, heavy metal stuff and things in Walker Street. Around what year was this? <laughs> oh, on Walker Street in yeah, Tribeca. I was 82 after yeah. my father died. You know, I think that was, was the, he ended up under the train of his car was smashed. What? And, uh, I and didn't it, know that story. Yeah, and if you see the the, the, the the sculptures of that time, that's you know just shred metal, you know. Uh, they were very very aggressive and very and, and, and they felt much better. I said, this is what I need to do. I need to do something physical. Right. I need to, the I need to be something that is from within and is my thing and is not responding to what's happening in the art world. So your dad died in Europe in Italy. Yeah. So, so the, the, the difficult time started because of when I was painting, even when I, you know, I used to always sell since I was a little kid, I would do things for the pharmacist or whatever. But once I started doing the sculpture, there was, there was uh, hard times coming because nobody wanted to, you know, the, the art world was going in a completely different direction, mm -hmm. into installations and, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was going uh, against the grain and, right. I, and I paid the price for it, nobody wanted to to show my work and uh, in Italy uh, more. I had shows in Italy. I, I had people that were interested in my work. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of shows in Italy, but New York had a very difficult time. Nobody, you know, the sculpture sent, you know, anybody that they would show the work, they, you know, they, they dismissed it. No interest, no Some, interest. Uh, they were not interested in it. And uh, Well, you know, recently I was speaking with one collector and he said, you know, the, the thing about America, yeah. which is sometimes good and most times not, is this pressure it puts on the work to be economically fruitful. So if it's not fitting in this it, market mold, that, that's what, it's thrown under the, the bridge. You know, the, 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 the woman that runs this corporate center came here and, uh, a few years ago. And she was for a long time, you know, looking at the work and then eventually a friend of mine, actually John Moore, which you know, just coming tonight, he brought, he brought her here. and. Uh, uh, she didn't say anything, but when she left, she told John, you know, that if he found, she found my work into, of course, you know, she had to say something, but it does not fit in the contemporary contest. 
okay? Right. So the contemporary contest was installation. That's what they were doing, installation one after another, mm -hmm. things hanging from the floor and the table and stuff, and the little things, and, the and uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. That's still what people are still doing now, but somehow they're, they're, they're decreasing, you know? They're yes, not, yes, yes. They're not as, as, uh, as popular as they used to be. So these massive yeah. things, though, I mean, you know, we see something like that in John Chamberlain's work as well with the crushed metal, the crushed steel. But these are somehow more figurative. They're figurative. In how you know, they're figures. They're, they're yeah. people. They're, they're, they're stories. They're uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, things. And um, and then eventually, eventually, what happened? So I kept doing this work, you know, and, and I have so much of this work downstairs in Italy. I, my house is full of uh, sculptures. Where's your house in Italy? It's in Tuscany. Uh huh. And uh, a small town called Massarosa. Mm hmm. And uh, it's uh, uh, I have sculpture on I put sculpture on the outside. It's in the middle of the town. I think I'm the craziest <laughs> person in the world. I put a devil. I made a devil <laughs> for myself and a Christ. A devil and a Christ. Well, and generally, kind of weird we, stuff. We, we, so the kids come and they look at these things. And <laughs> they think they they're, they're like. Uh, but eventually, eventually, I, I had a problem. And the problem was the space. You know, it's like a. Uh, my house in Italy is filled of stuff. This is filled of sculptures, and uh, and one time, one time Roy came. Uh, it was four, four and a half years. Four and a half years. That's your uh, son-in-law, yeah. Roy Nakum. And, and we had a, a talk one night, and and we were talking. He's a painter, right? Mm -hmm. And he also does other things, mm -hmm. installation and design. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and one night we were talking about, and I was telling him, look, you know, I, I, I bet you that the next big thing that is gonna happen in the art world is painting. And I wasn't doing, I was doing sculpture, it's painting. And the reason is, and figurative painting, okay? And the reason is, uh, uh, painting is, is the most fascinating uh, commodity that the world has produced. You look at the prices, you know, anything that is, you know, any work of art that is over a hundred million dollars mm -hmm. is a paint. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we have this person, it's probably has produced the greatest art uh, in uh, uh, the history of humanity. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's about 30 years, and I was saying that a few years ago, it's over 30 years of painting is kind of out of, of the scene. I mean, you know, the people doing their things, but you go in the biennials and you go, uh, you look around and you see installation and you mean that's what people are producing today. Mm -hmm. And painting, they're, they're, you know, you don't see much of that. Yeah. You don't hear of a new painter coming out with the, you know, something interesting and different. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and I thought, and I thought, you know, I, I bet you that painting is not going to die. This is not going to be the last time we right. see painting. Right. Right. It's not going to die. It's going to come back. Mm -hmm. And it's going to come. And it's the most fascinating. There's nothing more fascinating than the white canvas. Okay. Everybody starts equal with the white canvas. You know, the sculpture, the different material. It's a really different thing. Different materials. You can choose the kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But in painting, is the purest. You know, it's like you start with the white canvas. And then uh, uh, every you know uh, you you're a guest uh, uh, not a guest but you know you you're looking at an incredible amount of painting that has been done in so many different ways right. that it seems almost impossible to find your own way yeah. different than the rest because everything has been done I don't I think abstract artists like necrophilia is dead the, the, the phenomenon of the 20th century it doesn't give you any emotions anymore right. the Frank Stella used to look at with incredible admiration I see them now in 6th Avenue in the big building and they look like decorative pieces stuff. right right okay. right yeah it's almost dated <laughs> in a way <laughs> okay so we need to come back we need two things. Okay. So, so we're talking to Roy about mm -hmm. this stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. And I thought, you, you may, it's an error if you go towards installation, you know, you're a good painter. Stand, painting is, it will come back. So the next time he came over, he brought me a roll of uh, canvas and some color. Like, say, hey, let's see what you can do. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you got the theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What can you do in practice, okay? So I said, oh, you know, 
Uh, I kept that canvas for about three months, and I was kept doing my sculptures. And, and I was having a problem. I couldn't do any big sculpture any longer. I don't have space. And I was tempted, because I, I, I grew up as a painter. I was a little kid. I was a painter. So it was in you. I was really tempted, mm -hmm. and eventually said to myself, I'm going to give her a try, but I'm not going to give her a try. I'm going to, I'm going to make a major effort because I don't want my friends, artists, to come over and say, hey, yeah, interesting painting, nice painting. If I come up with a painting, you've got to be something that, you know, I get respect, okay? I don't want to just, you know, just do yeah. yeah. shit. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number one. Mm -hmm. so, so what am I going to do? I have no idea what to do, what kind of media to use. It's been like 30, almost 40 years I had a painting. Wow. And, uh, uh, and, and, and then, uh, but something was already going in the sculpture. You see, the sculpture, I'd ask myself, uh, you know, after this visit, and you know, you don't belong in the contemporary countries, that kind of thing. I felt extremely isolated from the art world. I still do. You know, mm -hmm. I have almost no contact whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Even though now you're almost in the center of the art world again in terms of Harlem, like there's a white box or something just yeah, on the next block but, and stuff know, like that. The, they show the same shit for what, what I have seen. But the thing is, you know, it's like before the painting, I said to myself, what am I, what am I doing? What am I, who am I working for? Am I working with the hope that the, the art world will notice uh, my work. <laughs> you know, am I working for myself? No, I could collect stamps and, and be happier, yes. you know? So I had this radical idea. Mm -hmm. Why not to work for the people? For the people around me, my family, my friends, uh, the neighbor, the whole world, work for the people. Instead of working for a small elite yep. that yep. pretends to understand what the hell is going on, but nobody does. <laughs> I've been there, I've done conceptual art. I've done things I didn't understand, but they just look good. Right, right. right. <laughs> well, that goes back to what one collector said to me uh, this morning. You know, at the end of the day, art is for sharing. It's about it's sharing. sharing. Yeah. It used to be like that. Giotto used to make this incredible new revolutionary thing. But the shepherds used to come and say, oh shit, look at that, it's beautiful. <laughs> you know? and, they, and, and so the Pope, you know, and everybody thought yeah. that, you know, that this guy was, uh, was amazing. So I asked myself, is it possible to make work that is for everybody? And, and if, if for everybody means everybody, mm -hmm. I don't mean, you know, a selective Few. group of people in the world. Everybody mm -hmm. means everybody. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, you're Chinese, you're Italian, you're small, you're, you're kid, you're, you're mm -hmm. old person. Everybody. Okay, is it possible to make art like that? That is original, number one. Mm -hmm. has to be original, otherwise it's no purpose to make art anyway. <laughs> uh, that is, is formally competent and, uh, and uh, is symptomatic of our time. And it's for everybody. Right, okay? right. So this is it, this is it, this is it. This is, this is what came out, you know, what came out. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna answer. Okay, it sounds like uh, some creature in the back of your uh, paintings. Yeah. You know, yeah. this nightscape that yeah. you've painted it, here. It, and it's like, I'll, I'll talk to you. Yeah. Um, so I thought, well, it, it, it has to be figurative. Come on, if you're working for everybody, for my grandson, for my dead mother, for whatever, you know, it, it, it has to be something that is figurative. You can't come up with some bullshit. It has to be figurative. Mm -hmm. It has to be formally competent because people don't take seriously some, you know, stuff. Uh, they take seriously if they see uh, that there is a, uh, a skill behind. It has to have a universal team, otherwise, you know, it can't be for everybody, everybody, right? So this is it. This is it. This is the result. Mm -hmm. In the end, this is it. This is the, this is it, it's, uh, it's 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 figurative. It's uh, it's clear to understand. But I don't have to tell what this is. People. Well, tell us because the, uh, well, yeah. tell the people who are listening yeah. because they can't see. Like describe some of well, these scenes, which look, I know you said it's, it's are the, reminiscent it's of. It's the end of the world. It's mm -hmm. the end of the world. Okay, the end of the world, not caused by uh, divine intervention or or by the atomic bomb, 
but we cause from us, you know, this is the, the, the end of the planet, it's a, the disruption of the planet, it's, uh, it's done, obviously, I, I try not to be obvious about it, mm -hmm. and, you know, but I think that anybody looking at this thing, they can see that, that the, there is the, the concern, is their intent, yes. the sculpture, or more personal, that was me, that was my demons, more stuff inside mm -hmm. me, this yes. is, this is less, this is everybody's, that is my fears and anxiety mm -hmm. that uh, materialize. This is everybody fears and anxiety. Right, 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 okay. yeah. So but that's, uh, but if I'm working for it, that's what I need to do. I can't just, uh, you know, tell, you know. Be self-reflective only. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there is a lot of uh, burnt out trees, uh, nightscapes, uh, beached animals, a uh, scary, uh, fish from the depths of the ocean, beach. The well, this, this are painted with tar, okay? Mm -hmm. The way I paint these things is like I put tar on the surface, usually I start with that. Mm -hmm. and, and why do I use tar? Because I use it in the sculpture, you see, this is a lot of tar. Oh, yes. If you look around, yes. I use tar for years, mm -hmm. and I find it, it's a beautiful material, and, mm -hmm. and it's contaminated, it has that kind of organic uh, feeling to it, rather than paint. That, mm -hmm. you see, that, that remains, you know, in the painting, you can see the kind of uh, uh, the breeze, you know, that the, the lives there. Yes. And uh, uh, b basically, you know, the, the artist I was looking more than anybody else when I started to do this nocturne, they all nocturne, that's what I did. Yes. The, this nocturne is, was Caravaggio. And Caravaggio painted mm -hmm. in a similar manner what he did. He, he, he painted the painting uh, brown, dark brown, almost mm -hmm. black, and then he went with light colors, and something didn't come out, he went over, and then he went to this light color, and uh, and, and to me, he's the most successful, you know, the, the greatest artist, painter, not artist, but he's yes. a painter of all time, in my yes. opinion, and uh, so this was, was kind of, it's like, a, uh, I, I saw, tr you know, it's like the white here is not white is, is, is the canvas. Mm -hmm. See? I use mm -hmm. white sometimes too, but mm -hmm. usually it's like I'm subtracting and you know, it's like this, this is not white, no, almost none of these things. No, 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 no. So I subtract and I add and, and I like the material because there's that kind of raw quality to it. Yes, yes. And I do paint it and, and, and I like the contrast because I paint in, in what I, uh, for better, for lack of a better word, called mm -hmm. a classical way of painting, mm -hmm. rather than you know the expressive or the, or, or the uh, uh, you know the brush stroke painting. This is a line painting. Yes. In, in other words, if I do a plant, I don't give the impression of the plant. I plant every leaf, like the, like Botticelli used to do, yes, right? yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> or like Bosch, you know, yeah. that kind of you know, uh, kind of stuff. So. So, the, so, so there is the combination of, of, of painting and the, in, again in the classical manner. Maybe you have a better word for, for that. No, no, no. I think and, you. And, and, and the, but at the same time, I like the rawness of the material, the dripping. Mm -hmm. So it has a, 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 a you know, a, it, it becomes in my opinion like a, like a, I never look at anybody for years. I haven't looked at anybody. Uh, in terms of contemporary painters, contemporary painter, mm -hmm. you know, from uh, I, I look at the romantics, I look at mm -hmm. the mannerists, I look at, at all that, you know, I, I went back to look at the old painting uh, right. for for uh, how should I say for uh, inspiration, you know, let's yes. say yes. You know, that kind of thing. And uh, well, I love the skeletons, I love the skulls, I love the. Uh, again, you said Hieronymus Bosch, you see it in these uh, little characters floating around uh, that could be a the skeleton of a bat or a fish or, I mean, it's really a very uh, powerful work. Again, not but, but everybody... But it's also, it's also, I hope, uh, it's, it's, uh, there is irony, it's comic also, you know, it's, uh, there is some, there is some, uh, it's not, uh, it's not morbid, I don't think, it's, uh, it has a sense of humor, you know. Uh, hope uh, it, it people see it and you know kind of uh, comes through. It's not just uh, uh, death and destruction. Yeah, definitely so. But there is also kind of you know it's, it's done in a way that there's you, you look a little various little things that happen in animal. There is a sense of humor. I hope. Well, I mean, you know, uh, the the fact that there's still green grass or that 
fruit is still growing in the darkness or the moon is still shining. I mean, you know, there's nothing like nature to remind us that we might disappear, but in its entirety, nature can be destroyed. No, no, um, no. Well, tell us again. Uh, this is the last painting I did in Italy. I was there. Oh, and this one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how was like your time a very in foggy, a very foggy mm -hmm. kind of. Uh, uh, you know, again, you 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 look at that and it's, it seems like a, almost a dilly kind of thing. But mm -hmm. when you go close, you see mm -hmm. there's a lot of. Uh, it's not a scary it's not a dream, creatures. It's, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. <laughs> well, I remember you said once that some of this landscape came from your childhood and that uh, it, it you, you from, visited it, it again. All, it all came from uh, Massa Rosa. Mm -hmm. uh, the last painting. The first mm -hmm. painting. This painting, mm -hmm. you know, they were more like a, a kind of. They came from the sculpture. You know, the apocalyptic mm -hmm. element was already there. Yeah. They came in, uh, in the painting. But the last painting had been, you know, all these, mm -hmm. this, this recent ones, that one that I did in Italy, they, they, all these, they, they come from childhood uh, memories. From, and that from, you had seen the lake from, change. From, from a lake, from, uh, yeah. from uh, uh, I, I was there this, this summer, I talked to my friend, just already talked about it. Mm -hmm. You know, the lake, uh, which is called uh, Torre del Lago Puccini, mm -hmm. My father built a fishing house when I was 14 in the middle of the channel, in the middle of the marshland, so we had to go with the boat in this fishing house. And, mm -hmm. and to me, it was like a sacred place to me. And I went there uh, all the time, you know. The kids would go to the beach to the hours, spend my time in the fishing house. And my first poet painting, I did it there. And, and all my friends, all my women, everybody, <laughs> came, came to the fishing house at one point or another, right. and then the lake became uh, totally polluted and, and, and died. Uh, all, wow. the, all the fish died, and, wow. and uh, uh, poison, uh, uh, poison uh, algae have, have stole themselves. So even the air that you breathe around, you, know, you Toxic. can't even go anymore. It's, it's because it's a small area and a highly populated. Wow. And they, they killed it. They, I don't think they purposely killed it, but they neglect, not really caring about it. So I'm very angry with my. That's why I put the devil in my. I made the devil <laughs> put it in my terrace. Right. <laughs> and uh, th there is no more insects, there is no more moths. And I observe things. I go there and look at the trees, I look at the things, you know. Uh, Look at, look at the flowers, and, I, and I've seen the, the change and the complete decay and the destruction of what it was to me like a paradise. You were there, you were a couple of miles from the sea, right? And, and, and you saw the mountains there, the Apuane, you know, right there, and you saw the hills. Yeah, and the so history is incredible from the Romans and prehistoric mm -hmm. people. And, there's so much there, you know, so many Romanist churches. And, mm -hmm. and, and to see the place kind of dying. I have a friend, uh, Pierre Luigi, is an architect. Mm -hmm. We spent the summer talking about these things with my friends, about how could we let that place die. It doesn't seem to be much interest now into revival, too many ideas, you know. Well, I th so that's, 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 that's why I got obsessed with mm -hmm. that. And then one thing happened this year, the, when I was there, somebody burned down the fishing house where I used to go when I was a kid. Oh, wow. But it was my first painting, mm -hmm. it was still there attached. And, uh, and I decided that I'll never go back down there, you know, I'd get, because I, get, I decided to get it off of my mind. Yeah. And this is the last painting. I did. Right. Uh, that much, yeah. I like that one because it's yeah. it's green as a post. A lot of these else, are like black. Yeah, this I, one's I, I reddish. Continue to say this is the that. Yeah. I'm going to take a look I, uh, after. I uh, I think I need to to forget about it, you know, and, and to get it off of my mind. This and is work on another 60 theme. Years, Sixty years. The fishing house has been there. Wow. And, uh, all right, we'll get that and we'll take a pause and then we'll come back in a second. And, uh, I know you had a studio in Tribeca in the 1980s, you said, and some other artists who are your friends like Roman and the other gentleman who's now in Queens, you all sort of discussed uh, losing those spaces because of the ballooning rents downtown yeah. and having to move to new locations. So 
it's influenced well, you well, in terms of what to, you... To make it simple, uh, uh, New York, uh, there is no more culture in New York. New York culture is dead. Okay? There's the official one, the museums, the galleries, and stuff. But it's no artist producing culture. You know, when I got here, I paid $300 a month for a huge loft, and mm -hmm. everybody else did the same. So they were like dance, dance studios, they were like off Broadway Theater too in Walker Street. They were mm -hmm. like uh, all kinds of artists and people doing all kinds of ideas and musicians, all kinds of places in the village when you could go and listen to Bob Dylan or to other stuff. It's all gone. Yeah. And yeah. this reason is extremely simple because the place I was paying $300 in 1975, mm -hmm. now there is a family and it's paying $15,000 a month for the same space. Wow, wow. Uh, so, that, yeah. so that's the reason why there is no more culture. I mean, there are isolated people. I hope I'm, I'm doing something like other people yeah. that probably, that I don't, nobody knows, you know, but, but there is no more, it's not a center it's not cohesive, when people yeah. come from all over the world to participate mm -hmm. in the New York culture. There is no more culture here. Yeah. It's finished, it's not gonna come back, yeah. but the rents, <laughs> the rents are gonna go yeah. up and the yeah. artists always need cheap rent. Yeah. So maybe it'll develop in Detroit, maybe in Africa, maybe in Germany, <laughs> but not in New York. Yeah. New York yeah. has done its period of great cultural center. Paris is the same, mm -hmm. died a long time ago and never came back. London you know. is the same. Same, yeah. and, and, and this is it, this is a city that if you have, uh, a lot, uh, if you have money, you can live uh, well, mm -hmm. but uh, do, not, do not come here to be an artist, Yeah. If uh, because there's, there's no reason for it. Yeah, I mean, you could probably be the artist whose dad is uh, providing a trust fund, and maybe the art is good, we're not so sure, but I've seen a few examples of that that aren't very inspiring. I mean, you know, it's one in a million who can come out of, of I think, this level of comfort and do something uh, to push the yeah, story it, it, forward. Yeah, it, it, it just, uh, there is no, it, you could breathe it, you know, you come here in the 70s and it was all over, you know, you could, you could on the walls, people doing things, graffitis, I would go down in the subway and there would be key tearing uh, things, you know, written on the, on the black, uh, it, it was, uh, it, it, it was the center of, of the world, that's why I came to New York, it was the center of culture, I didn't come to New York for the reasons, you know, right. and, uh, and now it's just not there anymore, it's gone, yeah. the reason is simple, money talks in this city, Nobody ever, you know, Giuliani and the other guy, they're all good mayor, but nobody ever, ever occurred to them that perhaps uh, you should not have artists like me that live 30 years in a place and being kicked out. Right. You know. uh, but there you should know, be some if you were support probably in some, in some uh, uh, European country, these things were not, you know, they were still yeah. trying to maintain. But yeah. here, money talks, you know, if you haven't got the money, you're out. So what do we have here? A lot of ignorant, rich people in this city. Or artists who are just producing stuff that the market demands and therefore they can afford to pay the studio space because they have a job yeah, supplying yeah, the market. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's, that's about it. Uh, that's, that's, that's the end of an era. Uh, and, and it's coming, and not coming back. And it's always a young artist. <laughs> I will move to a place like Detroit, or even Cleveland. I was there, you know, I had a show there. Right. And uh, you can get great spaces for, for very little money, mm -hmm. and you can know everybody, every artist, every gallery in town. Mm -hmm. You can be part of a community. Uh, and here, you're totally isolated. You have the same three or four or five friends yeah. that you have for, <laughs> for, for years. Yes. And, and that's about it, you know. And what about the other shows? You mentioned that one uh, in Cleveland and then this one here. Uh, I know you had another catalog you showed me last time as well, too. I had two, two shows in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. One, I had two big paintings. It was a painting show and the other one was sculpture with just, just my sculpture. You see that they give you a camera? For mm -hmm. that? I saw it last time I was here, and that's this one that uh, has the poster on the door. No, that, that, that is in Italy. That is a show here in Italy. I used to have a lot of shows in Italy. 
Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and there's, there, there was more interest uh, in, in what I do in Italy, so I have a lot of work there. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a critic who was interested in my work. He put mm -hmm. me in the Venice Biennial like, uh, four or five years ago, whatever mm -hmm. it was. And, uh, but, uh, um, but, you know, there's no money in Italy. It's no, it's, it's like people don't buy anything. It's, yeah, it's yeah. No well, I think they say the same about France. I mean, there are pockets of collectors, but in yeah. general, there's no... I mean, what uh, strikes me, and it, it struck me a lot in the beginning when I first came to the studio, is this uh, giant shark with all of the plastic uh, extruding from its stomach. I mean... It's a little obvious. <laughs> it's obvious, but you know, I, we, see, we see that photograph all the time yeah, now. It's, it's a, something it's we a, see in, in, in the news the, all the time. I, I did the shark without the plastic. And mm -hmm. then when I start showing this stuff, that's when I put the plastic later. Right. Years later, I put the plastic in there. And it's a little obvious, but, uh, but, but it somehow it says what, what I'm trying to do. Yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, I'm not agreeing, I'm not upset, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not interested in politics. Yeah. It's it just my personal experiences. Is, and it, 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 the horror that you see when you see the albatross Right, you know, they're full of plastic. They die full of plastic in the middle of the midway island, in the middle of nowhere. Well, the uh, shark is supposedly uh, one the of sharks, the oldest yeah, uh, yeah. creatures on the planet. Yeah. Like they, they find around. way of full of plastic and mm -hmm. stuff. So I thought, why well, not? And then, of course, there's yeah. Damien Hirst shark, and Ashley Bickerton was doing the sharks even yeah. before Damien Hirst. So the shark has some place in art history yeah, the as shark well. Is, it, it definitely does. I have a. Uh, uh, that's what I had at the, uh, at the uh, Venice Biennial, a shark that I have in Italy, not this one. Mm -hmm. And then I have another shark downstairs. I've got a, a couple, a few sharks. Right. Uh, well, I think... Downstairs I have a lot of sculpture, but it's a total mess. Like, I need, one day I need to re, re, uh, um, reopen it, you know. I, I used to show display my work downstairs. Right. And I had a floor. Right. And then the rats start coming in. Uh, oh God! So I had to block it. Well, I know some of these uh, metal sculptures. I don't think they would be uh, interesting for rats, but uh, even those guys who you have crouched in the box, you know, uh, they're yeah. they're really uh, quite haunting. Uh, at some point, perhaps we will add a visual element to the website where we can um, have pictures for the listeners of the podcast to see yeah. what we're discussing well, too. I haven't, I haven't uh, dealt to my website in years, mm -hmm. years uh, or anything. Uh, that, that's so an interesting thing. I might have someone for that for you Somebody put me on, on uh, what, do you, what do you call it, uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I put one painting there. That was it. <laughs> you and Alessandro. I never looked at it. Right. I never looked at it. <laughs> well, you know, Alessandro, who I know has uh, been influenced by yeah. your work and vice versa, he posts as little as you do, and he is like what twenty or thirty years younger than you. So, yeah, I he's, went to he's just as bad. I stayed with him up on the mountains for for a few days. Oh, in Bolzano. In Bolzano. Oh yeah? yeah. Oh okay. Beautiful up there, so beautiful. Oh okay. La Toad is really beautiful. Ah, uh, so he was finished with the residency by the time you visited him in Bolzano. He was finished, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they bought him a little painting. Mm hmm. Yeah. He's struggling to survive like everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, like everyone else. Well, I think um, we're going to stop now simply because we may not have more time before people arrive to the dinner. But uh, we could probably do this another time too. Yeah, I, I have a lot of good stories. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us and we'll continue the discussion well, another thank time. Thank you for, for, for doing yeah. the interview. I feel flattered and, and Grateful. Well, you, you've yeah. done a lot of good work and you have a lot of great experiences, so that's why we're here to share. All right, I'll cut off now. She died a few years ago. Say that when you were painting that, you thought you were going to put yeah. the ghost of your yeah, first right there, wife. Right there, you know, she did uh, an image there. Mm -hmm. I thought that I'm going to put the ghost of my. Somehow I had that idea that mm -hmm. I'm going to put the ghost of. You know, it's like. Uh, don't tell me where the idea has come from. But, uh, yeah. And uh, so I did it. I painted Elaine over there, and then I didn't like it, and I took a brush, 
and I wiped it off. And when I wrapped it off, I saw that image and I almost fell on the floor because it looked just like my father when he was young. You know? Wow. And uh, I didn't touch it, didn't touch it. This is the way it remained. Mm -hmm. so, so, so at this point, I, I had this idea of doing something like similar to this with flowers and you know, stuff. Mm -hmm. but, but I thought, okay, this, this is a ghost of my father. Right? I guess that's the name of the painting. Ghost of my father. And, uh, and what are the red dots? Like you said, it's true. They're all that's, throughout that's the That's the light. That's the, you know, the railroad mm -hmm. light. You know, I have some uh, keeps coming up. Oh. And, uh, and then I thought, you know, I can't make a garden. Flower, see, it's like in the Truscan tombs, you know, they painted, you go to Tarquia, they paint all the things that the dead liked, you know. If you like wine, there would be wine and there would be things and mm -hmm. stuff. So I thought, instead of flower, I'm going to make a garden. I'm going to have like grapes. He liked the grapes and he cultivated them. Mm -hmm. and, and wine. And then, uh, and then there's a watermelon uh, here, which he also liked. So instead of making a, a flower garden, I made like a, 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 you know, a garden of vegetables, vegetables and life, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah, something yeah. like that, you know, to make it more. But but that is that, that's all the the the, the kind of, that's that's what you see Mish come home. It's all so crazy, crazy uh, thinking, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that brings it true, you know. It's like uh, all these things. That too is is, is insane. The the thing, and and. and uh, all these things that are done, they all uh, come from memories and stuff. It's like a paradise lost, basically. Yeah, right? yeah. And, uh, and, and, then, and then I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. <laughs> and then what are you going to do after if I you stop? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm going I'm to maybe paint in the size. I'm going to cover it with tar. And I have no idea what I'm going to come up with. Well, let's see what happens with Philip and your next exhibition. Um, hopefully then, once you get these out, you'll get another idea of what to put in. Yeah, but I, I, I'm going to start working in the, in the next uh, week or so. I can't, st I can't stay without working. It's like a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like a... Yeah. It's a desire. Uh, it's, it's, it's an itch. It's, it's not the, the desire, it's the guilt. <laughs> You know, the guilt that you're not using your life properly. Yeah, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. drives me crazy, you know. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. And uh, this one, I want to show you a painting I did. Uh -huh. It's still, it's still, it's all, it's all the, it's all the, you know, outside my, my, the door where I paint, mm -hmm. there's a fig tree. Nothing ever decreased. At least on this thing here. Uh, it's like a it's all black. Yeah, it's like a it's a olive blanche. No, this is tough. Chocolate. Yeah, but what's this here? Figs. Figs. Okay. It's a fig tree. Mm -hmm. So I, I just brought home a branch. And mm -hmm. then I, I painted and it mm -hmm. took me some time. And then I put the, the constellation in it. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, uh, you like the constellation. Yeah. But this is the actual constellation, you see. Mm -hmm. It's the actual star. <coughs> Orion, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then again, there is this Marshall land, you know, which always, Marshall always yes. comes up. You know. Yeah, yeah. But to me, this is like the, you know, to me, this is a, this is home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that that's uh, I love the uh, what's the word the bareness of the canvas. Uh, yeah. So I may even start doing small paintings. I don't know. I have no idea what to do. Right. Well, you'll figure it out. I think if you just uh, make some space, uh, something will fill the vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um, uh, I, mm -hmm. uh, I feel very good 
I, I feel terrible about everything in my life. <laughs> but you feel very good about what? I feel good about my work. You know, I have to say, you know, I feel, you know, strong. I feel strong, and I feel I want to do it, and I feel I really got some stuff. Yeah, know, yeah, my, yeah. You know, uh, that way I can put in an interview because I'd be arrogant if I tell you the truth. Well, no, I think everyone should tell the truth, whether or not it sounds arrogant. Oh. <laughs> So, I mean, this guy over here looks like he's something out of a horror film, like Freddy Krueger with the axes all um, inside of him. You know, when I was doing this uh, this painting, and uh, I used to go to the bars all the time. The sculpture, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. and then the sculpture. Uh, I used to go to this bar downtown called the Liquor Store, uh -huh. which is an artist bar. Mm -hmm. And one night, I met this young art art actor. Very good looking actor. And he was the son of a very famous producer. Okay, so he came to the studio, saw the work, and he said, You know, my father's given me not much money, but he's given me a million dollars to make a movie. Okay, so it's, it's a small badge. But what I'd like to do, somebody gave him some inspiration, I would like to be the artist, okay? And you know, I got a whole story about being the artist, but I would like to 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 have you work as as mine, right? So I said, okay. So he, he, this this figures were, you know, and 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 a few other pieces. They they brought them in the set, you know, that kind oh, wow. of thing. Uh -huh. And uh, and then the the movie was kind of was was uh, being uh, projected like. Uh, uh, downtown, uh, the movie, you know, there is a, what's, what's the, uh, you know, famous place? Uh, I'm not uh, sure, on what street? The, the downtown is like... Film a, Forum or something like that? Whatever, anyway, uh -huh. there was a theater and everybody, and I went to see the movie, mm -hmm. and uh, not only the movie, it was absolutely trash, <laughs> you know, this guy was a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> he used my work as an example of a serial killer at work. <laughs> and it was an absolutely awful movie. But he had done some stupid drawings that he had put, that what really offended me in a sense. He has done some stupid drawings that they put next to my work. Uh, uh, in a, you know, it's like ruining my reputation. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, 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 yeah. So I was, I was just so embarrassed, you know. Fortunately, yeah. the movie didn't go anywhere. Fortunately, yeah. but still good that at least you got some recognition. Maybe he could have given you some cash, but that's a that's another matter entirely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll stop again.